Eh, ciao, ciao, tanti. Io sono Brian, io sono Stronzo5785 in, uh, in uh, the southwestern part of the United States. Uh, greetings to everybody out there. I'm, uh, forgive me, I'm a little tired. I had to, uh, I had a long week at work. So I get a couple days to relax and recharge and get, uh, get everything right again with me. Um, you know, I'm, I thought that dialogue with Muslims, correcting some of their errors in how they want to categorize Christians and Christianity, I thought it would be, uh, I thought it would be useful. I thought we would point out some deep philosophical problems with Islam and attempt to get some sort of an answer from a Muslim, one Muslim, concerning some problematic areas of the Quran. Instead, one gentleman greeted me with a profanity-laced screed and, and unfair and unfounded accusations of immorality and, and just plain illness from my scripture, in essence insulting my scripture as best as he could, while not really explaining anything. There was no new explanation. Um, I still remain of the opinion that Allah approves of men who beat their wives after, of course, admonishing them and then casting them from their bed and finally beating them when they become high-handed. Nobody bothers to define what high-handed is. Um, I've heard some Muslims say, well, that's only in cases of adultery. Huh? There's nothing about adultery and high-handedness. That means you're having sex outside of the marital relationship. That's what adultery is. It doesn't mention that in the Quran. The plain statement remains that there is a beating that's going to take place if the wife doesn't come back into obedience to the man and that the man supports the wife. Well, what if the wife has more money than the husband? What does that do to that scripture? It, there's other problems. There's many problems with that. Then we try to redefine the word beat when, when the word beat is used. Daraba, it doesn't mean beat. Yet every, every translation, every acceptable, every accepted scholarly translation of the Quran uses, translates the word daraba, beat, hit, or scourge. Every one of them to a translation. So now, instead of directly refuting an argument or trying to come up with a plausible explanation for this, we're now redefining and retranslating our terms. Um, it, it just doesn't hold water. The Bible has been translated into, the full Bible, into some nearly 500 languages, and fragments of that into over 20, you know, into almost 2,500 different languages, and there are no problems with the translation. Some of them it's taken a little while because it's difficult to translate one language into another, to translate one cultural context into a different cultural context, yes. And I'll acknowledge that. I'll acknowledge that, but the meanings of words can't change because a passage in scripture teaches something uncomfortable. We don't redefine the terms. Christians have been struggling with Numbers 31 about the, uh, about the Midianites. I've struggled with it, and I admit that. I'm prepared to admit that, honestly. Yet, that's a problematic passage, and I'll, you know, I'll admit it, but the problematic passages in the Quran, the sword verses, most Muslims just try and gloss them over. Oh, there was something going on in Muhammad's life. Well, if it's the word of God, if it's the word of Allah, why are events in Muhammad's life affecting that? If it is the mechanically, it, it, it's a mechanically dictated work. It, the mouth of God, the ear of Muhammad. If that's the case, then how can the, the, the events of the life of Muhammad affect that communication of God? And why does, or of Allah, and why does Allah only want us to understand Arabic? That 17% of Muslims speak Arabic. What about the other 80 some odd percent? Are they not reading the true word of Allah? when they read the Quran in their own language? I don't get it. I don't get it. We translate, hmm, 
English is admittedly a it, it's it's the vocabulary is not quite as rich as Greek or Hebrew or even Aramaic but we have translations which expand these meanings of these questionable words and when there is a question in the Bible you find right at the bottom of footnote hey we're not sure about this okay there is a question here all in all we have found that only about one percent a little more than one percent of the actual words of the New Testament are in question one percent where that one percent comes up we put it right there in the footnote hey this there this doesn't appear in some early manuscripts what it boils down to is Christians want to know what God really said we want to know I want to know as a Christian the Quran makes a big statement the Quran the Word of God the Word of Allah and yet we don't have any early manuscript evidence we have I haven't heard about it excuse me any Muslim any any textual criticism done by a Muslim between the Quran we have now and the earlier manuscripts I haven't seen one work on, of, of this nature on the Quran why is it blasphemous to ask Allah what his true nature is to wonder about it if that were the case a whole lot of us are, are raging blasphemers and I guess we all need to be you know those of us who do question need to be punished just for asking the question where in the Bible we read test all things hold fast that which is good all things includes the holy scriptures of the Christian faith there's a lot of questions a lot of differences of opinion and you know I can't fathom the name calling I can't fathom the accusations of mental illness that happen when a man me asks a couple of questions and is curious and goodness gracious some of the abuse just for asking that question um, once again Brian from my beloved hometown in the southwestern part of the United States signing off thank you very much for listening God bless you today it is Sunday and I do wish the blessings and peace of God go talk to him he misses you he wants to talk to you so far, yeah.